Uh, Mr. Dessonier is recognized for five minutes. Thank you. I just want to go back to a comment you had just a little while ago, Mr. Renault. So am I correct in saying that um, someone knew about Ms. Bueso Barrera's medical condition when that letter was sent out on August 7th? That's what you just testified. And remind you that she's asked for four times and got accepted prior to this. So what you just said is somebody pulled her file. That is my best estimate uh, of what happened. Yes, I, I believe that's So someone probably. under your direction, supervision, yeah, I, I think pulled the file and knew what the circumstances were. So I, I think that they, they understood that, they, um, that there were cases pending uh, uh, be in process um, and that um, USCIS had stopped issuing deferred action and so they issued the letter. Um, I, I don't want to pretend uh, or accuse that individual or, or make it seem like that individual made a judgment call mm -hmm. on her condition and in a heartless way uh, uh, did what they did. Um, this is, we, we certainly are, um, uh, we're USCIS. We are em em empathetic to people in their circumstance. Uh, but we have, you know, we are bound by the laws and the regulations and the policies that we have. Um, and, um, you know, uh, that, is how we, that is how we operate. As I said earlier, sometimes that means that, that we have to say yes to someone we'd rather not because we think that there is, um, that, 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 that there's fraud or misrepresentation or, or there, there could be harm to the country. It also means sometimes that we have to say no to people that, that frankly, we, we feel bad for and we empathize with. That is, that's the hard work done by immigration officers across the country every day. Um, so she's been approved four times in the past. You're gonna look at the file again. Uh, is there any chance that she would be denied because the guidelines and the discretion has changed? given that she's been approved four times, including okay, I, during this administration. Again, I, I have not looked at her case. I, I understand what we heard today. Um, I, I, I'm not able to comment on I, I thought you just, forgive me, I thought you just did comment and answer Mr. Grothman that you could not um, imagine that she would not be allowed to stay in the country. Are you changing that testimony? I think my testimony was that I agree with my colleague, and he, I defer to his expertise. And that was what he said. I, he said he cannot imagine a circumstance under which someone in her situation would be denied. Obviously, Mr. Dessonier has an intense interest in making sure think that, that his constituent has the right to continue to get her medical services. I, I, was, I was referring to removal. Now, what I'm saying is, is I don't, when, I, when you're talking about stayed in this country, would we remove someone in that situation? I cannot speak to her specific case. I do not know all the facts. And okay, the so let's here. be clear then. But, Mr. Grothman was trying to say that this was some kind of big political show because there was no chance any of these people would be removed. And now what we're getting is answers saying there's a chance that, that Mr. Dessonier's constituent will be removed. And she um, was terrified long before she came to this committee. We didn't know anything about this. There is terror among hundreds of people in an extreme medical condition. Correct. So let's stop playing games. I liked it better when you guys just said you couldn't testify. Don't tell Mr. Grothman that there's no chance that people are going to get kicked out of the country and then turn around and tell Mr. Dessonier that his constituent could get kicked out of the country. I'm sorry, Mr. Dessonier, your time is restored to you. You care to respond to that as a humane institution, Mr. Reynolds? or Mr. Robbins. And I'll tell you, Mr. Robbins, uh, if you try to remove her, knowing my constituents, you better bring a lot of buses because a lot of us are gonna be arrested trying to protect her. What, what, I, what I was trying to make clear, if, if, if you allow me, was I cannot uh, judge this case here for the, for the people that we're talking about. But what I said was is similar cases that have compassionate and compelling humanitarian reasons we use discretion every day. We have in the past enforced an immigration law, we will in the future. We continuously use <clears throat> discretion on who we arrest, who we place in proceedings, and ultimately remove. What I was saying was, is if there was a case similar to that, I cannot foresee a similar case being removed from the country, placed into proceedings, and ultimately removed. Now, I can't speak to her specific case, because I, I think it's unfair for me to try to adjudicate that here in this hearing room. But what I can say is that our officers, on a regular basis, use discretion on very sympathetic cases and humanitarian compelling cases. And our officers do it very well. They do it professionally with compassion. 
And I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm sorry that many um, moral, ethical people who are in public service have to go through this. And to me, um, this was not contrived. I mean, these constituents came to me. We heard their testimony about vomiting in a, hotel, in a hospital after she had gotten hours of treatment. Um, but what's changed is this letter. And if either of you or anyone out there is listening, and Mr. Chairman, given your expertise in law, I do feel sorry for these gentlemen being placed here, How, because I know where the responsibility is, in my view. But this, this was a heartless, cruel thing to send out. And Mr. Renaud, knowing that somebody in your organization, I assume you've worked there a long time, knew what this would have, do and how this deviated from the previous four times she applied, we've got to get to the bottom of this and we've got to hold people accountable. And if they're not going to testify and use use a contrived defense to give us the truth, the obvious facts, then I don't know how we pursue it. Do we find them individually in contempt of Congress? As my colleague said, they're, they're responding to the American public. This, somebody needs to be held accountable for doing this, and it needs to be corrected. So I'm, to say that I'm disappointed as an American to stand, sit here um, is an understatement. That I don't know where our level of shame or decency will ever come to a point where all of us can say a letter like this is not in the spirit of America, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, and somebody should be held accountable. Mr.